Many eukaryotic mRNAs contain non-coding introns. These must be removed and the exons ligated to create the mature mRNA. RNA molecules, termed ribosomes, catalyze self-splicing reaction. Most splicing occurs with the aid of proteins in the spliceosome complex. However, many hundreds of introns are able to splice without the aid of proteins and are considered to be self-splicing. Group 1 introns fall into this category. The secret is in the tertiary structure of the ribozyme. The highly conserved folding structure places the reactive nucleotides into a highly specific active site containing several metal ion cofactors. This model shows a simplified view of a group 1 intron. One of the most important folding events is the creation of the internal guide sequence, or IGS. The IGS positions the 5' splice site into the active site near the reactive guanosine for the first step of the reaction, then aligns it with the 3' splice site for the second step. That is, the exact position of the 5' splice site cleavage is specified by the sequence complementarity of the IGS with the exon. The IGS serves to hold the intron in the active site so it doesn't dissociate before the second reaction step. After splicing has been completed, the IGS must release its splice product RNA for its necessary functions in the cell. The sequence of the IGS must be precisely tuned to carry out these functions. The IGS is composed of six base pairs with four of these following Watson-Crick base pairing rules. AU base pairs have two hydrogen bonds, while GC bases have three. In the IGS, there are also two GU base pairs. These are termed wobble base pairs since they don't follow Watson-Crick rules. GU pairs have two hydrogen bonds in a slightly different register. Thus, their strength is similar to an AU base pair. Experiments have shown that the total number of hydrogen bonds in the IGS affects the activity of the splicing reaction. Changing one of the wobble base pairs from GU to GC increases the total number of hydrogen bonds. This creates a stronger association between the exon and intron, which is responsible for a defect in product release. On the other hand, the mutation of a GC to a GU base pair decreases the total number of hydrogen bonds. This weakens the association of the IGS with the 5' exon, which slows the rate of production formation. Changing the sequence of the IGS can, in some cases, alter the position of cleavage in the first step of the reaction. Comparative sequence analysis of a large data set of group 1 introns shows that the secondary, but not primary, structure is highly conserved. Conservation of secondary structure is indicated by sequence covariation in which base pairing is retained even though there are changes in the sequence. The self-splicing reaction of group 1 introns occurs in two steps, each of which is a concerted phosphoester transfer. In the first step, the free guanosine enters the active site in a specific binding pocket near the 5' splice site. The 3' hydroxyl of the guanosine acts as a nucleophile to attack the phosphate between the last base of the exon, a uracil, and the first base of the intron, an adenosine. The oxygen moiety of the hydroxyl is the actual nucleophile in the reaction, and this must be activated in some way by interaction with the active site. Whereas the substrate geometry is tetrahedral at phosphorus, the transition state geometry is pentacovalent. Here, the bond between the 3' hydroxyl of the uracil and the phosphate is broken, while the free guanosine is ligated to the adenosine. At the end of step 1, guanosine, now covalently bound to the end of the intron, exits the active site. The 5' exon, now ending in uracil 3' hydroxyl, remains bound to the IGS in the active site. Step 2 starts with the last guanosine in the intron entering the active site. Similar to the first step of the reaction, this guanosine binds to the pocket in the active site that is highly specific for guanosine. The ribozyme must now position the IGS with its associated 5' exon so that it is aligned for reaction with the bound guanosine. In this step, the 3' hydroxyl of the uracil acts as a nucleophile to attack the phosphate 3' to the guanosine of the intron. The bond between the guanosine and the 3' exon is broken and the uracil of the 5' exon is ligated to the 3' exon. The intron has been removed and the exons have been ligated to form a mature RNA. The IGS then releases the product which dissociates from the active site. 
In this case, the exons that have been joined together represent the large subunit ribosomal RNA. Subsequent steps allow this rRNA to assemble with other rRNA and protein components to form the large ribosomal subunit. The intron, which corresponds to the folded ribozyme, remains catalytically active. It can undergo a series of subsequent reactions involving phosphoester transfer and hydrolysis before it eventually is degraded. Although the intron of the tetrahymena ribozyme interrupts a ribosomal RNA, there are hundreds of additional examples in which a similar intron interrupts the coding sequence of an mRNA.